Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Boss Rush Podcast, a great place to play games and be better. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Derrigan. Alongside me, as always, is the PC Muscle Race himself, Ron Dawkins. Yo, yo. Hello, Black Magic. <laughs> Damn, I see I'm going to get tired of that real quick. <laughs> hey, I was told to call you that, so you can you can take it up with the person who told me to call you that. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. They and I are going to have words. Oh, come on. It's it, fun. It, 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 it sounded weird just now. I know. It did sound weird coming out of my mouth and slightly racist a little bit, to be honest sounded, with you. Sounded like I sounded like I need like a like a like a silkwood shower. It seems like you need like a banana hammock or something. Ah, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. I don't even look oh. in jock straps. Mm -mm. Hey, man, look, I look, I clicked on some weird ad the other day on accident. And then see that that is, started, that is that is on no, you. I started I started getting ads for all these weird things like like uh, mm -hmm. like fucking card games. And like I saw some underwear with like literally a, a, a dick pocket. And I'm like, this is this is too much for me. Oh, those are getting more and more common. Yeah, I just I, I'm like, man, it's like it's like, why do I is like, why do I need a like a cock and balls tunnel in my underwear? I don't understand. Yeah, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before we get on that train. Uh, also, here is the mad pharmacist herself, Stephanie Klimov. She's back. Hey, I'm, guys I'm... always have it so lucky. They have an underwear with a with a extra pouch to cradle. The precious oh, yes. goods. It's, it's so lucky. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. No, how no, no. I, I, you know what? <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like this stuff just got engineered in the last ten or fifteen years. This stuff wasn't around when I was a kid. Okay. Like, so like the you, you guys like, get more comfort, more space. You know, women's clothes it gets tighter and tighter. I see so much fucking camel toe everywhere, and I don't want to see it. And I'm bisexual. I still don't uh, want to see it. Uh, uh, What's yeah. it? I didn't. I didn't think you were going that direction because I was about to say I'm. I'm with you about the whole underwire I'm, shit. I. 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 You know. Oh. I. I don't. <laughs> I, I've never worn a bra, but I understand it because I've helped people take their bras off. You know, Stephanie, it, I'm gonna. I'm gonna agree with you. Um, there are certain things that I like to see, but that is not one of them because it's just weird. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, no. Oh. No. That's. You know. It's just. Hmm. Quick side Either. tangent. I need a new running shorts <laughs> because the other elastic is just too gone, so it falls down. So I'm like, all right, I'm yeah. just going to go to Walmart. Or no, Target first. And every single pair of bleeping running shorts is the tight legging, like the legging tight ones. Mm -hmm. And it like, isn't, isn't, the ones that like goes up your ass crack to make your mm -hmm. ass look good. Yeah. Look, isn't it crazy how influencer style has fucked up regular fashion? Isn't it crazy? It is. And you know what? If you want to wear that to like look sexy but not work out, fine. But I need actual legitimate workout clothes because you know what? When I run my four miles, I sweat. Do I want clothing up my ass crack and my girl parts while I'm running and sweat? No, I don't. I had to go to three stores before I could find normal running shorts. Trust me, okay. trust me, us dudes, us dudes don't want it either. That's why, that's why we have to wear like functional boxers when we, when we're working out. <laughs> cause, cause God, like the last thing we need is like our actual underwear, like cutting up into, never mind. Let never me, mind. let me tell you, speaking of running shorts, my kids took the string out of my shorts. So, oh God, <laughs> they've taken all the strings out of my shorts, my hoodies, anything with strings in them really just, they're gone. So, um, and as somebody who has been losing weight the last year or so, and you need refuses, those strings refuses to buy new clothes until I'm done. Um, strings are important. So. Yes. Yeah. Speaking, yeah. <laughs> speaking no, of I was just, I was just oh. saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. I yeah, wasn't yeah. trying to, I just was I wasn't trying to interrupt. Uh, speaking of important also here's PK power pack Klein. <laughs> man. This is like almost the second time I get introduced five minutes later into the episode. Hey, hey, just just roll with it. Look, man, we, it's, it's been a great, it's been a great day, conversation. Pat. At least we didn't forget you. Yeah. Yeah. What if we just forgot? That would be mean. Yeah. And then I probably would have spoken up by the time you got to the games we played. Mm, that's fair. Honestly, if we honestly, if we if we ever forget you on a show, we're the ones that need therapy. Mm. I mean, I need that anyway, but that's OK. Um, <laughs> hey, I had my appointment this week. I my insurance is makes it very expensive then uh i'd rather suffer and buy video games but it's fine uh oh yeah never tight around by me. the way 
By the way, my doctor told me my doctor told me my uptick in video games is a, is a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. and I'm like I'm like yeah I, I can agree with that. Mm. Is that supposed to be a bad thing? The, no, okay. she said it was. She said it wasn't a bad thing. She said she said it. it she said based off of what I told her, it felt like I'm making up for lost time. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. Mm. Yes, making up for lost time. I'm still playing the same shit I was playing before. Not like I'm playing anything new. So I'm making up for lost time by playing the same shit over and over again. Play what you want to play, Laron. Okay, don't let your yeah. therapist tell you anything. <laughs> play what I want to play. Play how I want to play it. Uh, I'll speak. be the one that eggs you on to play something different. God damn it. Hey, Mario Luigi's coming. Mm, I will accept that. Said. Mario Luigi's God coming. Damn it. God of War Ragnarok is coming, which means I got to go play God of War. And beat that before Ragnarok comes out. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, good, good. A lot of, a lot of great games coming out. Zelda next yeah. week. Got a lot Zelda. of. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I cannot believe I'm actually running out to buy a Zelda game day one. God, it's it's been a long fucking time. Like the so last good. guys, so the good. the last the last Legend of Zelda game, brand new Legend of Zelda game, not not a remake or a re release that I bought day one was Legend of Zelda. The Minish Cap. That was the last wow. Zelda game I bought day one. I have this Breath of the Wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have Breath of the Wild. I I bought that like two years later. <laughs> yeah. Zelda's a great game. I can't wait. Echo I don't have some. tears. I don't have tears of the kingdom. I wonder if it's going to be two whole years before I buy that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you weren't that into Breath of the Wild, then maybe yeah. maybe you don't need tears of the kingdom. Although tears of the kingdom. Very great on my mind recently. So honestly, what compels me the most about Tears of the Kingdom is the name. Like, I think they did. a. I think they nailed it with just naming that game. Did you hear the original name for the game? No. What was it? Tears of the Dragon. That wouldn't have worked. But they changed the name because they thought it would be too spoilery. It, it would. Yeah. Been. Yeah. Well, if you if you, if you guys think it's a bad name, don't listen to Pow Block tomorrow because uh I, I thought the name was fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm not saying the name is I'm not saying the name is bad. I'm just saying that 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 name wouldn't have had that one. That name wouldn't have stuck the same yeah. way Tears of the Kingdom sticks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I don't know. I can't wait for Echoes of Wisdom, though. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. You know what else I love? Disney's every big mini or Mickey. Uh, also coming out same week. I know it's. Epic Mickey's fine. I will get it because it's Epic Mickey and I I like it. But what I do like is everyone's support over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. If you want to support us, you can head over there. Uh, subscribers to tiers on our Patreon grants you perks like exclusive pre and post shows for shows, uh, voting rights for spoiler casts and video game book club, exclusive question threads for spotlights and more. As always, though, your viewership and listenership is enough for us. You can head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe, hit the bell, comment on the video, all those things. Thank you for uh, making some of our recent episodes very, very big. Much appreciated. Um, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave us a five star rating or a nice review. You can ha find all of our content over on BossRush.net, including our BossRush banters, our features, our listicles, reviews, and so much more. Um, uh, upcoming content. Um, real quick, I just want to plug all of our PAX stuff. Uh, we had twelve videos come out of PAX and a lot of uh previews on games, uh, a lot of indie games, a lot of Nintendo games. So you can go check that out. Uh, Stephanie, there's a big one coming up. Yeah. Um, Damn. no date, no official date of when this will be released, but. We will be speaking with Billy Basso this week for our developer spotlight. Um, I'm going to choose my words carefully because I don't know if anyone that he knows will listen to it. But I am a fan of him, of him and his She's game, a fan, all Animal right. Well. <laughs> anyway, so I think this is amazing because um, his game was very well received. He worked on it for a long time. Definitely a contender for Indie Game of the Year. I wouldn't be surprised if it won that, honestly. Um, so yeah, we'll be having a spotlight with Billy Basso. 
Uh, and also, I don't have all the names are lined up yet, but I have about four responses already from developers from PAX West that I will be doing spotlights with, including uh, the ones behind Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which I know is also kind of a big, highly anticipated one. So please stay tuned. Check out our spotlights. Yeah, and I, I have about three or four lined up, too, that I'm waiting on responses from from a couple from way forward uh finish line games um so working on those working on it pat you got yep. anything got anything uh well we just got our book clubs uh going on right now we have paper mario and the thousand year doors our free book club you can hear it right now uh we had special guest celeste as well as my friend taylor or just taylor as we like to call her on the podcast uh, so give that a check. Otherwise, if you're a patron, you can still listen to Zelda and the Orc Arena of Time. Uh, and that's going to become free, though, here in the uh, in the month of October. Yeah. Uh, Dead Space is our next one. So, yep. Uh-huh. That'll be mm. Patreon yep. for October. Y'all better, y'all better not be fucking with me and be like, oh, it's the original Dead Space and not the remake, or I'm, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> it's It's the remake. Okay, thank you. Remake. Thank you, because I've I've been I've been pouring a lot of like hours in, into this game. Like I've I've gotten to the point where the game doesn't unnerve me as much as it as it would normally do. But you know, because because I'll save it for I'll save it for the book club. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, we'll uh, have special guest uh, Christian from the uh, franchise festival. Oh, nice. Yay! Podcast. Love that guy. Yeah, he was on a uh, what the Resident Evil Four one with us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, also, a also a proud patron. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, I guess we could probably get into what we've been playing. Uh, I'm going to go first because I finished a video game. Everybody, write this down. I uh, I finished Link's Awakening finally. <laughs> finally, God, oh. you've been you've been playing that game. You've been playing the you've been playing that game for what three years now? Uh. It, I started in I started when it came out and then I restarted in yeah. 2022 when I went on vacation. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. I played it I played it my entire vacation and then I stopped playing when we got home. <laughs> that part. That part right there. <laughs> and it got lost out, in the egg and never got out until today. And it turns out I was only 2 hours away from finishing the game. So, uh yeah. But what a what a wonderful game. I thought I I thought I should finish it before Echoes of Wisdom comes out. Not that they're like related, but similar style and whatever. And I'm like, oh, probably should do that. So that was that was really fun. Uh, I've also been playing a little bit of Animal Well. Um, I I've only played I've only played like an hour of it. It's definitely uh, it's definitely got a look and a charm to it. Uh, it's I, it's very colorful. I I really like the movement and everything. So um, I will have more to say probably next week. Um, hopefully I'll have more to say to Billy Basso about it when we interview him. Uh, that's the, do you have any relics role. yet? Huh? Do you have any of the, or not relics, uh, items? Uh, I have no idea. I'm not gonna lie. No, yo, yo. You know how I am with Metroidvanias. I'm probably only 10 minutes into the game and I've been playing for an hour. So, uh, you know, did you get to the statue room? I got, I got to a statue. <laughs> I I love the yo-yo, but I think I love the I love the disc too, especially when I found out I could hop on the disc. Ooh, there's a disc. Like a frisbee. I like the, I like the slinky. Oh, the the slinky. slinky. <laughs> very very different items that you usually would see. So I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh I've also I also played through the Epic Mickey demo and um it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's epic. Fine. It feels it feels better than the Wii version. I will give it that. Uh, it definitely runs a lot better. The combat seems a lot smoother. Um, they added some quality of life things, but it's 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 fine. It's like a. I would say it's probably going to score in the sevens. That would be my guess. It's not doing anything new, but also it's a fifteen year old game at this point. So, uh, but that's that's all I've been playing. I've been. I have been, however, drawing 
a lot lately. So uh, that has been taking up most of my time, I guess. Hold on. Oh, oh I'm going to break something. It's fine. <sighs> I drew a dragon. Not just mm -hmm. a dragon, the light dragon. The light dragon from Tears of the Kingdom. The, um, see, I'm a nerd because I was like, why does it look? Uh, it looks like a different version of Shinron from Dragon Ball. Mm. Nope. It's, it's that so, style of dragon, the Oriental style. I, uh, I've, I've been, um, also drawing the Master Sword, the decaying Master Sword wrapped in the, uh, Silent Princess flowers. So that'll be my next thing. But I'm a little rusty. A little, little rusty. Grayson yelled at me online today. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like, he's like, why are you hiding this? I'm like, I'm not hiding. I just don't have time for it. <laughs> oh, I love Grayson. He's so cool. Yeah. Uh, but that's it for me. Uh, Stephanie, you've been gone for a while. What are you? Uh, what are you playing? Well, I guess you were here last week, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So like, I got uh, my my big list out of the way. It wasn't really that big, but so all I've been playing in this past week was Farewell North because turns out I wasn't at the end of the game. I have more to play, which is fine. I'm not complaining, but I don't want to re review the game and not finish it. So I'm trying to finish it um, and get a review out by Sunday and a little bit more Astrobot because there's just, it's just such a wholesomely fun game. I love finding the, the rope, the robots that are after, you know, that are other characters. Um, and yeah, it's just pretty clever. I, I let my son play it a little bit, and I wasn't sh quite sure if he'd be able to handle it because even though it's not a hard game, it's still, you know, still need to be you know dexterous as far as like how to move and stuff. But he caught on pretty well, which I think that's a nod to team. Is it Team Asobi? Like yep. their ability to teach in a very natural way. So he enjoyed it. I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm still very early on. I only defeated the first major boss, and I'm at the second galaxy now. But the boss battle was also just a lot of fun. Wasn't, Wasn't it hard, but it was fun. I know. It had all those like cinematic steps to it. And, you know, it, it just felt really good to beat it up. Exactly. So I'll be playing Astrobot here and there over time. I, I do feel like it's a game that I can leave and come what back to. What did you think about the level after the boss? The very sure. unique level where Going it gives you an item. Yep. Yes. That was fun. You literally just played Ape Escape. Okay, I see. That That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. like, like give you like a mini sampling of a game. That's pretty cool. Yep. No, it's something that each galaxy will do is it will give you a sample of some so sort of Sony classic. Sony, see, this is a freaking gem. You guys better take advantage of this to the to its fullest. Jeez. Mm -hmm. So right. yeah, that's it's honestly just been those two, and then next week I'm I they these at least farewell north. I want to get done before the Zelda game. I cool. am Astrobot. Mm. Astrobot. I am Astrobot. Mm. Speaking of Astrobot. I am Astrobot. Uh, is that all you've been playing, Stephanie? Yes. Laurent, what about you? Um, more of the same. Like, I mean, honestly, like nothing nothing's new. So Monster Hunter World, uh, Andre is officially playing with me now. Andre Wilson. Ooh. Shout out to my shout out to my buddy. Like I've been showing him the ropes, and he's actually he's actually starting to like branch off on his own. Like it's it's kind of cool. Like I like I antagonize him with Star Wars memes, and that's kind of what keeps him motivated. <laughs> um. That's yeah. Awesome. Uh, it's, yeah. And so that um, uh, rounding out rounding out my run of Dead Space to get ready in time for the book club. Um. And uh, and uh, yeah, like Tekken Eight, of course. Um. 
I've had, I've gotten some friends that actually want me to play with them locally online, well, locally and, and online and stuff like that. So like, you know, like I, I have a small peer group of people to play with, you know, when I'm not, when I'm not messing around playing, <clears throat> playing the online rank mode. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and those are the major ones right now. I'm, I'm, oh, I mean, yeah, Ghost of Tsushima. I'm, 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 I'm hot and cold with it. Not, not the game's doing anything wrong to me or whatnot. Just, just that I'm just, just kind of scattered with games that I really want to play. And Ghost of Tsushima is just like there, you know, on the hook. Mm, okay. Nice. In a very fantastical world where mankind is basically at the uh, brink of extinction and they're stuck in an eternal dark age full of beating up aliens and uh, worshipping some machine god emperor that hasn't said anything in the last like so many centuries. Hmm. I'm talking about Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Oh, okay. Yep. How you digging it? How you digging it? Uh, I've never actually played anything Warhammer except for the uh, um, Power Wash Simulator Warhammer expansion. <laughs> <laughs> so I have like little to no knowledge of anything Warhammer related. Um, it it's very interesting because you got like that Dark Age setting with um with how the humans are acting. Like they have priests and you know. Templars or they're essentially knights, um, but they're also like space marines as well. Um, and uh, I gotta say, like the game itself is very beautiful. Uh, it's got some pretty nice like set pieces going on. And when you get like alien, uh, some of the alien hives like just swarming down on you, it looks absolutely fantastic. Like. It's one of those, like, you're in almost like a starship trooper setting, and you're just seeing all the, like, bugs start, ch- you know, coming at you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I'm probably not going to survive this, but you're also a space marine, which are genetically engineered, like, superhumans that, that's their that's their thing. They go out onto the front lines, and they, they go for that glorious, you know, they, they look for that glorious death in battle. Uh, as they decimate as many things as humanly possible. So, uh, but it is a very, other than like the set pieces, I can't say that it really does anything like new to the the third person shooter genre. It, it's a lot of, you're going to walk through a corridor for a little bit and then you're going to get into like a big set piece where there's going to be a lot of action taking place. You're going to, maybe face a few rounds of enemies and then move on to like the next little section. Um, and you know, the occasional little dialogue in between, like some banter between your characters, but it's not like really funny mm-hmm. banter. It's like super serious because these guys don't have a sense of humor. I think it got programmed mm-hmm. out of them. Uh, so it, the gameplay is pretty average. Uh, it, it's more, I think for people who are really into the Warhammer lore, mm-hmm. um, it may be also for multiplayer purposes too, because you have the main story campaign, and then they also have another set called Operations, which has a bunch of levels that you can play co-op with other people. And I tried one of those solo, and I got my ass kicked. So I, I think they really do want you to play with other people in that case. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it, otherwise like it's interesting. It, it's a decent game. It's just not going to be like as wow as like some of these other like third person shooters have been. It's, it's mm-hmm. very average in terms of gameplay. Okay. Um, other than that, I uh, picked up, uh, let's, Talk about a game that Corey probably won't care about next. Uh, it's called Caravan or Caravan Sandwich. It is an indie game where you are this girl who gets a message from her uh, lost sister who's been lost for six years, and so she comes back to her home planet to try and you know figure out where the message came from and maybe save her sister. Uh, on this, like, it's kind of like a deserted or deserty wasteland kind of a planet, but it's like 
a very colorful um cell shaded kind of look uh and you get this van that will help you uh kind of look for these scanner or like jammers that are like blocking communications as well as uh just kind of explore using like a grapple thing to pull doors open or um mm-hmm. i just recently got a hacking device to hack through computers but it's it's a um it's a cozy exploration game where there's no fighting whatsoever it's basically go around explore do some light puzzling talk to the people inside you know in this this little like desert settlement and you know tackle some quests for them um Mm -hmm. but it's uh it's it's cute it's the story um the story's not too bad um it, it's mostly you're there to explore um and that's that's the fun thing is to go around and try and get as many components as you can to upgrade yourself to the next item uh to help you explore even further into these ruins and uh kind of piece together what exactly happened to this planet um so it's not bad um cute little indie game nice what's it called so it's it's called Caravan Sandwich. Sandwich. Okay. Yep, and not like a sandwich that you eat. It's a Aww. sand. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, seen I've I've seen previews of it and stuff like that, and it looks it looks really cool. Yeah, I think uh, it's it's made by a group. I think they call themselves Plain Toast. So there's there's a lot of like mm-hmm. bread humor in it as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely like, punny for sure. Yeah, they have a social media network called the Toaster. <laughs> um, Aww. But yeah, it, it it's cute. It it's a it's a fun little game. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, no, this is the game that I've actually been really addicted to this week because I saw it. Uh, it popped up on my Twitter feed and immediately gave me mystical ninja vibes. What? It is. I know. Called- I know exactly what game he's talking about. <laughs> it is called Bakaru. Yep. And uh, it looks, it, it definitely has some Mystical Ninja vibes. It does not play like Mystical Ninja at all. But it's like a 3D, uh, plat- it's not really platforming either. It's 3D levels where you kind of get from point A to point B while finding some collectibles and beating the living snot out of uh, what they're called the Festival Gang. Uh, basically, they're uh, like lantern people and like mm. goofy looking uh like minions wearing like festival clothing um it takes place in a very fantastical japan um which which is kind of what led to me wanting to talk about our pre-show topic uh because one of the claims in this game is that you will visit every uh um like every area in japan like all the prefectures is that what they're called yeah, uh, they're basically uh-huh. like every state or major region in the Japanese uh, archipelago. So um, it it's really uh, it's really colorful. You play as a tanuki who has been tasked with helping this little like girl with a teacup try and uh, find a hero to help fight off this oracle that br- is brainwashing uh the citizens of japan uh to continue to follow this like festival thing it, it's it's not like really super deep but um you know the the story is very anime ish um like there'll be some like jokes and like over exaggeration like pictures and there'll be some giant robot fights later on down the line and transforming uh dog robots that turn into vehicles and uh, basically, you go around and you beat people up with uh, drumsticks. That and sounds you're... like a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> it is. That's like, I am seriously just really enjoying this game um, because I'm getting that. Like, some of the cool things about the collectibles in this game is that they're these little creatures called scoops. And they look like th- they look like little golden poos, <laughs> and they give you like little trivia of like different uh, bits of culture in Japan as well. And there's like five of them on each level. Um, so they'll tell you, they'll teach you things uh, such as like 
oh, did you know that sugar water boils faster than regular water? Or Mm -hmm. uh, maybe something about uh, local culture in Japan or uh, some interesting facts about food. Uh, But it is... It is freaking adorable. It's funny. Um, it, it's just been a lot of fun for me. And it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just really enjoying it. I think that's why it's like the one game I've been playing like a lot of my uh, this week's runs. So, yep, I, I think you might like it. There is a demo on the Switch. It, it okay. is a Switch, uh, Switch or PC only, I think, right now. Um, yep. And finally, I picked up today the Plucky Squire. Yeah. (laughs) I know you've been waiting for that one for like a hot minute. I have been waiting for it. And because it like I remember when they first showed this preview and had that storybook like Mm -hmm. aesthetic going on. And then all of a sudden you saw the character like jump out of the book and go into like a 3D world. And I just thought, dude, this is the most craziest thing, you know, concept ever. And let me tell you, it is a very creative game. Like, just it, the game is definitely taught, you know, told through like the imagination of a child. It's like mm-hmm. being like taking these characters from a storybook and like, you know, creating crafts around like the idea of these characters as well. Um, and like, it, like just kind of the creativity um, that comes about with the levels in this game. Uh, when you're in the, the storybook mode, or in the storybook, you can actually take words out of a sentence. Or it, it's not, you can randomly pick them. It's it's typically a keyword somewhere in that sentence on the page. You can, like, knock it off and then replace it with another word, which would then change something on the page. Such as, let's say there is a giant bug in your way. And the keyword that's causing it to be big is huge, according to the sentence. It's like, there's a huge bug, you know, blocking the path. Somewhere else on this page, there's the word tiny. Mm. And so, like, you got to work your way through the puzzles uh, to get tiny over to that sentence and place it in the sentence so that now it says there is a tiny bug, you know, in the middle of the road. (laughs) <laughs> and that will shrink the giant bug into a tiny bug so that now you can continue on through the level. So that that I thought was actually a really creative uh, aspect of this game. Um, and then it's cool kind of shifting between 2D and 3D and then having to take maybe some of those words from a different page, move them over to a, another page and use them to kind of solve a puzzle as well too. Uh, that's one of the things you can do is you can jump out, you can flip the pages around and then, you know, jump back into the book as well as, uh, explore, um, explore kind of the region outside of the, the book as well. Um, but in terms of the actual like combat and stuff, it's not really much to write home about. It's just your typical, like one button press to, you know, slash about one button to like do a dodge roll and then you can occasionally buy some power-ups. That's the equivalent of like a sword, uh, tossing your sword like Kratos does with his axe and like calling it back or like a twirl. And I think there's supposed to be a jump thrust down. Um, and, you know, it, it's not like super fluid combat either. So it's, you know, it, it it's not, yeah, it's not super fluid, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's not like intuitive that much but you know for the most part like the game's creative the gameplay itself is just a tiny bit on the clunky side but Mm -hmm. you know it's still like it's still a solid game um i did already run into a bug in the game that's already caused me to be on a path that will not give me a platinum so i'm going to have to reset this again because i'm only like two hours in So I'm going to have to, you know, replay this again. Uh, Apparently, if you, they added, they recently added a chapter select in the game, but for some reason, like, the chapter select does not save the data that you get in the chapter select. So for the 
um, trophies where you have to get like all the collectibles, you literally have to do it all in one run right now. Otherwise, it won't you know register. So I have to go back because I missed something uh, in a previous chapter. But uh, yeah, no, it's still it's it's not it didn't. I I might have hyped this game up a little too high uh, when I first saw it, so that that's on me. But it's still a great game. You know, it's just not the game of the year thing I was thinking it was going to be. Mm. Huh. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's how humble of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's 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 better indies out there right now, but it is still a good game. If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreoncom network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network. All right, everybody, let's uh, let's move into this weekly segment. Uh, it's a game that we all love to play. It's going to be a good time. It is video game 20 questions. Oh, no. you did this to me on purpose. My I first did. week back and y- I did. this is this is the topic. I did. Lauren, you, I said, did. You were, you said you were playing games, so I, I had to. I had to. <laughs> we're playing game. To, we're playing games. All right. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I have a game mm-hmm. picked out. I'm going to throttle you. So here's how it works. You guys are going to go round rock or you guys are going to ask 20 questions, right? Let's obviously let's try to keep timing in our head because we don't want a lot of dead air between guesses. But also you can talk amongst yourselves to kind of piece the clues together, right? Uh, We're going to 20 questions. If you think you have an answer early, you can guess. But if you're wrong, the game is over. Okay. So I will highly advise you to make sure your guess is correct. Is Destiny 2? It is not. Game Damn over. it. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, we, 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 we love we we appreciate playing this game tonight. I will um I will give you a little bit of a clue. I would say it is not an extremely difficult game to get. But it's not a layup either. It's not like a, you know, it's it's not it's not like a super popular game. But I think people that love it's not this, Tears of the Kingdom kind of no, thing. No. Yeah. yeah. So um, remind me I again: also, is this just yes or no, or is this we can ask you it's, like uh, it's what, a yes or no questions only? Okay, so we can't be like, what system is it on? And you say, oh, it's a PlayStation Four. Nope. Yes or no? I'm gonna wink. That's wink, how nudge, we burn. Nudge, that's how we. Though. That's how we burn up our guesses. Here, yeah. here's here's your one hint. It is uh, it is from the era of gaming that Stephanie probably knows best. So, N sixty four. That means that means I'm going to crash and burn on this shit. All right, here we go. Video game twenty questions. Mm-hmm. Who's asking the first question? I think Steph asked what the first question was. Um. Oh, guys, before I ask it, Pat Leron, should I ask if it's specifically N64 or is it from that console generation? Because that's also the PS2 generation, is it? PS1. I would, I yeah, would ask. PS1. PS1. I would ask specifically 64. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would say specifically, yeah. Is it a game on the Nintendo 64? This game did appear on the Nintendo 64, yes. It appeared. Okay. That it's, let, me, let me put it this way it's original release was on uh, was part of that generation and it did appear on the nintendo 64. oh so it's multi-platform yeah. is it a horror game um no it is not okay. a horror game so it's not resident evil got it hmm. nope not resident evil sorry pat that uh... wasn't a question <laughs> You, you tried, Pat. You tried. Um, okay, so my question is, my question is, like, is it is it one of the top selling games of that generation? No, definitely not. <laughs> okay, so now he knows uh, an obscure. Now he knows an mm, obscure ass game. It's uh, 
I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like bottom of the barrel, super rare, like niche game. But I wouldn't say it's like, you know, it's probably not in the top 20 selling. Can, ask, can I ask a second question? You can ask 20 questions if you want. Actually, well, I don't want to. I don't want to. Are we keeping track? Yes. Well, that's, that's three we're questions three. so far. That's three questions so far. Mm-hmm. Um, my question, my question is, is this game part of a franchise? Oh shit! I was about to. I was about to say two questions in in one. Uh, yes, is this game part of a franchise? Mm, no. Okay. No. 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 Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me double check that answer for you. Guys, it sounds like it's a one-off game. Mm. Let me, let me, I just, I just want to, I just want to double check. Um, it, it is not part of a series. Okay. Is it a platformer? It is a platformer. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Pat, your turn, because I I went two back to back, so it's your turn. <laughs> Is this platformer made? Well, okay, it could be multiple generation. Mm. Is the developer Treasure? Uh, that I don't know. I will have to look that up. Yeah, look it up right now. Um, hmm. It is not treasure. I, I asked the question, is it part of a franchise? Mm-hmm. But I think what I really should have asked is, is it part of a series? Like, is I, there, is I, there... I said it wasn't part of a series. Okay, okay. okay. I knew what you meant. That's okay. why I clarified when I said it. When I okay. repeated it back to you. So okay, then it eliminates it eliminates one answer that I have right now as far as like a game. Okay. Oh yeah, what was that? Since we can talk amongst ourselves. I I I'm putting it in the chat. Oh, okay. That's the that's the one I, that's the oh. one I think it eliminate. That's that's the answer I think yeah. is eliminated. Uh, no, I was at first I was thinking rare games but all right was i was think i was thinking oh, of a said, question. when you said when you said treasure i i thought you were thinking rare no no treasure was treasure was one of my favorite developers back in the day though yeah no rare was strictly nintendo back then so that's why i'm like mm. oh yeah you're right yeah yeah you're right hmm all right. So, Lorana, are you still thinking of a question or did you ask your other question? I'm sorry. I have not asked my other question. If you if you have a question, go for it. Do you play as a, is the protagonist or whatever and otherwise an inanimate object? What? You, sorry, I thought you were talking to Laurent. Sorry, what? <laughs> is, is the main character that you play as technically considered an inanimate object uh yes like a glove yes okay so it's premiered on the end not premiere but it was on the n64 it's on other platforms it's not a series Hmm. it features an inanimate protagonist it's a platformer I have my guess, but I know it's way too soon to be guessing, and I don't want to be wrong. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have other questions. Well, we're on question number eight right now. I mean, Nine, the one I you're think. thinking of Nine. could fit because that was on a different platform as well. Could fit. Maybe it ha, fits like a it? glove. Ha mm-hmm. ha ha ha. See, Go. see, see. Go on. Here, let ask me, let for me ask. Steph. Let me ask one more question since we yeah, have a time. Okay, yeah, yeah. Ask your follow up question. Okay, yeah. Is the is the developer Interactive Studios? Hmm. It sure is. Oh, I think you're. I think you're. Guys, guys, I'm going to answer it. Is it Destiny? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Is okay, that Steph, final guess, Stephanie's on. Stephanie's on. <laughs> Stephanie's on a roll. Like Stephanie, you, yeah, you, you have more questions you want to ask? You're on a roll. Stephanie, don't acquit because you know what it fits. Well, do you want me to make the guess, guys? Or do you want to ask more questions? Oh, I want you to make the guess. Not make Corey, a guess because I, I have. No, Wait, it's, it's, it's a game that Stephanie's really looking forward to. Would you? Did you ask? Is a it question Glover? Though? It is Glover. <laughs> it premiered. It it its original uh, release was on the Nintendo sixty four and the PlayStation and Windows. Mm -hmm. uh, it is coming via limited run games to PlayStation four, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch very soon. Um, Although the Xbox version is not getting a limit a physical edition, but Limited Run is publishing it on the Xbox. All right, where you made the mistake is giving us that hint that it is a uh, a generation. I, look, we're going to be playing that. We're going to be playing this a lot more in the in the near future. And I just I thought the first one should be kind of like a. Oh, you're just throwing us a bone. Oh, okay. that would happen. Oh, that would happen? Okay. oh my god, this guy's an asshole. Me, I am. You're right. I'm I love it. Asshole, oh. you love me, Laron. No, I he's I just. I wouldn't have gotten that. So, 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 kudos to you, uh, you, uh, Stephanie and Pat. I wouldn't have gotten this one. He's blown up my ego. I, that's all. I think uh, Corey, no, Corey knows the 64 era is like my is like my weak spot. Well, you know, Laron. Ne next time I'll do uh, 90s PC games. Okay. Oh, don't do that. No. <laughs> is it don't Return to Zork? Oh. <laughs> Watch me some shit like <laughs> Space Quest: The Return of Roger Wilco or some shit like that. No, that was fun. Thank you. King Quest Four. That was uh, that was not as painful as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Excuse me. So that means there'll be more twenty questions later in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more. I uh... now because we answered that in like ten questions. Does that mean ten other questions get rolled over? No. Right. <laughs> right. I I love the way you think. Mm. Does not work like that. Sorry. Um, boo, boo. Look, look, if we ever do like a 20 questions extravaganza, um, then maybe like we'll do like 100 questions with over five games. And then those questions may roll over if you get, you know, early. But uh, we'll uh, we'll see. Speaking speaking of classic games, Battletoads Double Dragons come into uh, Super Nintendo online switch, whatever. Corey, you know what? Corey, I have a question for you because, like, I, I I know um I know we give you a hard time about like about like movies you have or have not seen and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the original American Pie movie? No. Well, that's kind of a random movie fair. to be asking about. Yeah. Every every day we we stray further and further from God's light. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm a failure to most people, but it's fine. <laughs> Oh man, I love you guys. Love you too. We love you too. Uh, all right, let's get into uh, the 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 boss rush banter of the week. Uh, so the boss rush banter of the week is an article that we pick out that has been written within the last week from one of our writers over at bossrush.net. Boss rush banter is our daily feature. Uh, it takes a talking point and expands on it. So uh, James wrote about uh, wrote a, a banter called Go Out and Create Something. Um, and as content creators and as, as creators of other things, you know, we like to do other things outside of this, uh, I think. Um, I, tr I try to think I like to do things outside of this. Uh, the, my question to you all is how much is creating things a part of our lives and what is the most important part of creating for us? So, Laron, I'm going to go your way first because I want to. OK, so I'm um, going with this uh, going with this banter. Um, actually, actually, I, 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 I can confidently answer that, you know, like er, like every so often as a matter of fact a couple of weeks ago i even did this um like uh like i'm always drafting up outlines for like future story ideas that i may or may may not ever write and stuff like that but it's something i do like i i mm, he's getting up uh-oh mm. i go out and buy notebooks and mm. i start just writing shit writing shit in it like more or less story ideas and that's something I do. It also it also kind of keeps my my brain from like just just like writing with like you know like 
Cause like I will, I will sit on my, I will sit at, I will sit at my, my desk and um, nine times out of 10, like the stuff that we do here on boss rush is the stuff that kind of like occupies my free time. So like, I'm always looking at stuff for like how to build the better OBS setup for like streaming, even though I hardly ever stream, I'm always looking at stuff for like video content editing and creation through DaVinci resolve and stuff like that. I'm always doing something for the creative part, but, no, it's not always like the the actual like old fashioned hands on creating like writing for example or or artwork and stuff like that. So so I am pretty proud to say that uh, that every every so often every few weeks you know like I I start like I grab a notebook and I just start scribbling stuff in. Yes, this is an actual pen in my hand. Hmm. Actually, actually, I don't always use a pen. I'm I norm ninety percent of the time I'm using like one of my pencils. Yeah, I'm not artistic. My art, my artistic, my 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 artistry is is literary. Not, I I really wish, honestly, I feel like if I if I knew even how to just like rudimentary sketch, I'd probably be on a roll as far as like my writing would go. Because like I'd be able to um, I'd be able to like basically perceptualize like you know like 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 the way my the way my characters look, the way like environments are supposed to go and stuff like that. I would be able to do it a lot better if I was if I was able to sketch. But you know what? Um, I'm not a storyboarder, so I guess I will never be in the Hollywood writer's room. Well, Laurent, I think, I think you could write a Hollywood script. I feel it in my heart. I feel like you're going to write the next great Star Trek reboot movie. Oh, thanks. That, that, that's, that's saying a lot, given that a lot of my sci-fi kind of like steals from from Star Trek. (laughs) Over the years, I'm going to share this with you guys, and I'm and I'm gonna pass the mic. Over the years, like with a lot of my sci-fi writing, like I've looked back, I've I've this the stuff that I was able, like you know, my mom was able to like to like save and stuff from when I was a kid growing up and stuff like that. I would read some of stuff, and I was like, man, there's so many copyright inf- infringing things going on here with Star Trek, Star Wars, and um and and a little bit and and a teeny tiny smattering of like this uh this other sci-fi show called V, you know. It, it's it's and so like I've actually I've actually you know now as the grown ass adult I've had the job of like of like a uh, of like deconstructing stuff to make it seem original. But here's the problem: as I got older, I also started writing more original content, and I'm starting to see that stuff show up in like newer mediums now and stuff like that. You know, like a like I've. Like uh, like I've I've done like the living the living android that doesn't know it's a freaking android thinks it's a human all that stuff and like we've got like mm. like shows that you know like androids don't know they're they're actual like machines and stuff like that you know um you know I it's like motherfucker you know like um like Star Trek Star Trek did this and I'm like man did they did they steal something from me like I created I created a race of uh I created uh, I created a species of uh, of aliens that were based off like the, like our animal kingdom and stuff like that. And there was like, there's like, there's like seven predominant species and stuff like that, you know, based off of cats, wolves, uh, like birds, reptiles and stuff like that. Season three of Star Trek Enterprise back in, back in 2000, created the Zindi arc. And their major protagonist was a race of multi, multi multi-species, like, 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 like aliens that were based off of the animal animal kingdom. I was like, what the fuck? Furries? Jesus Christ. No, 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 God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to, I don't want to give a lot. I don't want to, I don't want to give a lot of my ideas, my ideas away, but, um, but there was, um, but there was, there was a cool thing with DNA for why, like for why, like my aliens are the way they are. And the good news is like, I can still get away with it using it. But of course someone's going to be like, Oh man, like he stole the Zindi from Star from Star Trek. Fuck y'all. <laughs> mm. I stole a lot from Star Trek, but I did not steal the Zindi. They stole they stole that from me. Yeah. Paramount's gonna sue my ass now. <laughs> yes, they will, because they are broke. <laughs> <laughs> they're not they gonna get under. much more they're, they're not gonna get much more money from me <laughs> if they come after my ass. I'm not gonna be the person that bails them out. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my gosh. Pat, what about you? Are you creative? Where's your uh, creative bone? My creative bone was destroyed in high school, unfortunately. 
Uh, but I was very creative back in those days. Like I loved creating art. I loved drawing. I was even writing stories. And uh, then I got told that art would not, you know, pay bills. And that well, I yeah, I think else. isn't that like isn't that like the, the the splash of cold water in the face for all of us creatives? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. like art like art or our passion will not will not pay the bills you know like i just happen to have like an adjacent like like passion that finally became a career you know like it and electronics you know but i feel like i'm more like tripped into that you know like fell into the bushes and 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 found that than versus like it you know like me going directly to it no i i was literally sat at the dining room table with my dad and his recent uh russian uh wife who was a very practical person. Wait, repeat that? He <laughs> just recently got married to a Russian woman. Uh, that, you know. Not the mail order bride variety, right? Not the mail order. More like when, op -ed online. Because when you say it when you say it specifically like that, like there's a there's a mental image that comes up. And maybe I'm just a pervert, maybe? No, it's uh like she it, she was educated so she's <laughs> she wasn't looking just to become uh you know a housewife <laughs> okay um, okay i'm gonna but, shut up now yeah they uh she she was a very practical person and you know she saw my artistic side as like uh hindrance and a weakness and they literally you know basically told me that i you know need to stop pursuing arts um, ah, and start focusing it, on real practical skills it sucks when they kill our dreams yeah um so in terms of absolute like creativity now um like i would say the most create i like i create spreadsheets you know that's kind of creative not really oh but, uh, hey i'm i might start picking your brain because like i i need some spreadsheet help yeah, uh, and I would say I'm intermediate. I'm not like advanced though. Like, I've seen some well, really good spreadsheets that, it, for me though, I'm like one of these kind of people that I have to deconstruct things. Like if someone shows me a spreadsheet, I'm going to be looking at the formulas and seeing where all the different like pieces are being pulled, and then I'm able to replicate something off of that. Um, another okay. like it, it's almost like building Legos but I need the instructions. You know, if you give me the instructions, I will build it. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm actually, I'm okay with building, like building like Lego creations from the ground up. That's the one thing I can say. Like, it, it takes me a while to like conceptualize it, but I can do that. Yeah. Um, and other than that, maybe the most creative I get is uh, with my pit cross games. You know, mm -hmm. I, again, it's following directions, but it creates a picture at the end. So, but yeah, my my creative side died when I was eighteen. Mm. Sounds a lot like a similar story to me. Um, so I guess first of all, the question: I do think creativity is very important to everybody, and creativity comes in way more forms than drawing and writing. So, mm. and I think that's what unfortunately many people think of what creativity is, and in a lot of cultures families they downplay the importance of the arts and creativity when you know sure you have to live your life practically so to speak but at the same time that the arts and creativity is what gives in my opinion or one of the uh gives humans one of the reasons why we stick out from other non-intelligent animals so to speak you know, we have the ability to create, to design, yep. to come up beyond what is necessary, and that becomes culture. Look at all of what we study about Greek mythology, of all the artwork from the Renaissance and stuff like that. If we start killing creativity in like 50, 100 years, we're going to look back and be like, wow, what the fuck have we been doing? Nothing. Uh, Just yeah. letting a AI generate our images. We won't have all the, the Picassos, the Da Vinci's. And I mean, I'm giving like really basic stereotypical examples but that's kind of true and even the decades there's like a style to the 50s the 70s the 80s right and that includes music not just physical artwork right so that was my first part of my answer i do think it is actually very important and it can 
come in many ways. Personally, I have always considered myself a creative person. I always loved to draw. I always wanted to make my own graphic novels. And my attention span was not great in school, but because my parents didn't believe in any sort of mental illness of any kind, the way I coped was on my notebook on one side, I will write my story. And on the other side, I'll write my notes. So I will be doing this simultaneously at the same time to keep my brain engaged. And by the end of like my sophomore year of high school, I had basically a Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time fan fiction completely written out in my English <laughs> notebook. Mm. Um, and then I kind of similarly with Pat, I had uh, parents that told me that artists are losers and it's a waste of time and all these horrible things. So I had to go to pharmacy school. And at first I thought, well, I'll still do it on the side. But then I learned that going to pharmacy school literally murders any creative cell in your body throws mm -hmm. them in a dumpster and sets it on fire and then throws it to the bottom of the ocean and nukes it you know like all that stuff yeah. so yeah. i actually had a hard time after pharmacy school even when i wanted to revisit my creativity i almost kind of did not know how my brain kind of was rewired and reprogrammed to think just more analytically and anything creative i could come up with is just just shit so all the novels that i've written i have four novels with a fifth one coming out next year those ideas were from my high school days i pooled my ideas from high school and i wrote them in my books and once they're all published i have nothing left in me <laughs> i am done so but um that my sad sob story sh you know should be more of a lesson to others i and my last point is i was honored to speak to my high school um, two-ish years ago, a couple years ago. And I was supposed to talk about my career. And I said, and I kind of gave both sides where I said, you know, I am a pharmacist, but you know what? I have a creative side. I was, it was dismissed when I was younger, but please do your best to follow what your calling is. If you feel like you want to create, don't stifle it. So the fact that I was able to tell my story, hopefully I can give hope to the younger generation who feel like they have to be serious and not create and, and stuff like that. Kind of dismiss that stigma. So, because we still need a culture. We still need something that makes us distinctly human. You're so right. Yeah. And uh, I mean, not to not to bring AI into this, but, you know, like that's the whole thing about AI is like the art, like a lot of artists and and, and things are, are going to be start being manipulated through this thing. And like art and like there's two things that make us distinctly human besides our consciousness of life. Right. It's uh, it's being it's, able to create four fingers and a thumb. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, no, it's it's it's. <laughs> it's music and it's art, right? Yeah. Those are the things that are able to, to differentiate us as, as humans, as individuals. And, um, you know, obviously there are people who are more creative than others. There are people who are idea people. There are people who are great, uh, painters and drawers and musicians and singers and all these things. Right. Um, and I think, I think being creative is just, it's, it's such a, you know, a magical experience, right? It, it, it's, it's literally like, it's, it's like nothing else, you know? Um, you know, and I kind of have revisited that part of my brain recently, um, because I've been drawing a lot and I ordered some canvases to start painting again and you know because i used to do that i used to do it all the time you know I, I used to paint and draw all the time and it was a part of my life that made me really happy and then you know it helped me get through some really hard times it helped me um you know kind of cope with things that also helped me just focus and and be you know just kind of be me in a, in a sense so um i don't know i just think i think if you have a creative side you should definitely um 
you should definitely focus on it and, and at least be in tune with it. Even if, you know, you don't make it like a career or something. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Exactly. You know, I mean, like I said, um, before when we, we've, we've created something here at boss rush, right. And that's a different type of creativity, but it's still, we're still creating something. Um, yeah, I got, I got my day job because I, because of what we've created here. Right. And that's something I think I can be proud of is like my creativity finally got me somewhere in life. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, um, everybody should try to be as creative as they can. Um, and you know, if, if your life allows your like time and, and you have the, the, the will to like really try to do something special. So. You know, to piggyback off that super quick, I think creativity is just kind of almost a, a, a just a, a word to, to frame how humans express themselves right? Mm -hmm. Creativity is human expression. And I don't know, when you have a lot of feelings, emotions, I feel like I tend to be most creative when I'm in a certain emotional state. Uh, It needs to come out, whether it is through writing, singing terribly, drawing, smashing Mm -hmm. glass. I don't know. That's creativity. I don't know. I'll I'll just stop there. But anyway, expression, human expression. Mm Mm-hmm. No, I look at uh look at the indie games that we have today. Like the indie games is basically people creating, you know, their expressions and their thoughts and their passion projects. Mm-hmm. Like these are games that wouldn't have made the AAA space because those aren't you know, created based on like emotions and like passions. Those are created because something sells well. Mm-hmm. Um you know, but indie games, like these are people who are literally pouring out their hearts and their ideas. Like you were, you're going to be talking to Billy Basso here pretty soon. And the man literally has absolutely no background in anything video game related, but he wanted to create something and he will, you know, talk about creating like everything from scratch, like mm-hmm. the music, the level design, everything. It was him. So it's. You know, There's a lot of talent. Yeah. Like, it's something he, you know, self-taught himself. Uh, but, like, he wanted to create something, and he, you know, he learned it. how to create it. It's pretty amazing. hmm Yeah. I, I, I love, I, side tangent, I love seeing, like, solo developers create their, like, create the game's by themselves right like the yeah. stardew valley also yeah like same here kind of yeah it's like it's just so impressive that one per and i know like the tools are getting easier to use and whatever but it's still no less impressive mm-hmm. in my opinion yeah because you still have to know you still have to know something yeah yeah i i sure as fuck can do it nope i i think <laughs> maybe if i had time i would try but I just I don't know the first thing about doing any of that. So you know, uh, I'm I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say like this. I feel like I feel like I'm I'm not super creative and stuff like that. So you know, like how like the whole like the whole like argument for abortion is like, what if that one what if that one child you abort is a is a person that cures cancer or something like that? I guarantee you, like I I could have been aborted and there wouldn't have been no problems. The world would have moved just moved on just fine. Oh my gosh, what the what kind of oh, I'm just, just I'm here? Just, I'm just. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, I don't, I'm just saying, I, I, based on how well I know myself and stuff, yeah, like, I've, I've got a creative mind, I can, I, you know, I can write and stuff like that, but I feel like, I feel like that's the, the only limiting thing I have, I have, and it's, and it's, and I doubt I'll be, I doubt I'll be the next, like, you know, Stephen King or Dean Koontz or, you know, uh, uh, Patterson, you know. Yeah, but creativity doesn't necessarily mean f- fame and fortune. Hey, right? I would. Hey, I would like to be published and make and and, and be able to retire. I will. I, w- I would love to. You know, like shit. Like where my job is just writing, write another book. Mm-hmm. Also, also, I've seen what 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 authors that who have actual agents have to go through. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I can deal with that type of pressure. 
I can I can't imagine getting a phone call at six thirty in the morning like you like you owe me a hundred pages. Yeah. <laughs> just just uh, yeah, just good. give them the uh, George R. R. Martin, you know. Oh, you know yeah. what? You know what? It's funny. I read something. I read something from him uh, that he talked about the other day, and um, he, he 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 basically said something like, you know, like um, you know, like uh, one of the things he would have done differently is he would have finished the book. And I'm like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that guy has no desire nor any reason to actually finish that book anymore. I know because he's making he's making money off of the residuals now. Mm-hmm. But at least he's not doing fuck all like some other like some other author that created a, 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 a an amazing franchise that 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 us nerds love, you know, to death and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, I'm not naming I'm not naming names, but you guys pretty much know you guys pretty much know who I'm talking about out there. Like you don't have to. There's not that many brain cells you need to burn up trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know we know. We know. I, I'd take a guess, but no don't. guessing, no names. Don't no. no names, no, no names. Speaking of no. names, we have questions. Do we? Want oh to boy! Them? Uh, sure, let's, let's quickly All right. bang them out. L- listener yes, bang question: them. Bang them out. Bang it to bang, the curb. Bang. Yeah, nothing like a good bang. Uh, if you want to bang out some questions with us, you can <laughs> join our Discord and <laughs> look for <in> the. <laughs> Uh, you can leave your questions yeah. in the in the boss rush podcast uh thread or you can look for a twitter post or anywhere else all over the place leave a comment on a video i don't care where you leave it just leave it somewhere i check it all uh still saying shane this was his question from last week uh, that we didn't get to but he asked uh based on today's ps5 pro reveal uh Mind again, this was from last week. Uh, showing specs for the model that cost seven hundred dollars USD based uh, base price. What specs do you think we'll see from Nintendo when it comes to setting prices for its future console? And what types of specs do you think it might have uh, based on the price of the PS Five four hundred uh, to the PS Five Pro seven hundred dollar version? Um, I'm going to tease this up to wait, Laron. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, the PS5 is still five hundred dollars. Am I right? The, or did, or, did, or the is digital, there a price drop? The digital version is four hundred. Oh, they price dropped the digital. No, the digital yeah. was three ninety nine when it came out. I thought the digital was. I thought it was. I thought it was four forty nine. Not when I. I. I, I, when I, I don't. It. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Wait. Wait. Y'all punting to me? Don't. Don't punt to me because. Oh my God! Like I'm. I'm the tech guy. Don't do not punt to me because <laughs> yeah, I'm, okay. yeah, I'm punting to you because you are the tech guy. What you talking? Didn't, didn't you okay, just say in all, our, didn't you just say in our group chat that you didn't get to rage about the PS5? <laughs> I'm not well. I, I'm not raging about the PS5 the way the the way the general population is raging about the PS5. My raging is that is that for seven hundred dollars, for seven hundred dollars, you're getting a damn good fucking con- video game console. You know, I can build you a PC for about eight hundred dollars. That will do the same exact thing, if not better than the PS5 Pro is, is is slated to do and stuff like that. So you guys are complaining for for bullshit. <laughs> now, the one thing I will say is like my eight hundred eight hundred fifty dollar machine will do more than just play fucking video games for you at at four K at four K thirty forty or sixty. It, it, it will do more than that. As a matter of fact, it will help you probably build a life and do something, you know, like write a book or or draw something or create content as well as play fucking video games. Which you know, So I'm tired. So I was tired of discourse about like it being too fucking high. Number one, like I, I do agree with one. I do agree with one thing IGN said, and that is because Xbox is shooting themselves in every extremity possible. There's a reason that's the reason why uh, Sony had the gonads to put out $700, you know, but also, but also this is still a fucking steal. If anything, I think the $700 price tag on the PS5 pro is just basically the pilot light for what the PS6 is going to be priced at. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think, um, so at first I, I thought this this price is ridiculous and I, I'm I'm still of like this is still high, but like it's high because like I, we is high because we're we as um, uh, as well, not well, just Americans, the world around we're suffering from inflation, like inflation is crippling us, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it was funny because like when they revealed the price of the PS5 Pro, right? 
Somewhere in my head, somewhere in my head, I thought I paid six hundred dollars for the PS5 base. And that's and that's what inflation does to us. Like it, 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 it mars it mars our concept of the money that we spent in the past. You know, that's one of the things it does. It also kind of convinces us that the prices right now are supposed to be the norms and stuff like that. No, it is ridiculous to go out and buy a gallon buy buy a gallon of milk for four dollars. Is is ridiculous? You know, it's ridiculous to buy a dozen of eggs for two dollars and, and some odd cents. You know, <laughs> there's. There's so many chickens in, in the United States and everything. Why the fuck is the price? Of, why the fuck is the price of eggs so high? There's so many egg laying chickens out there on farms, on farms specifically and stuff like that. There are so many cows that are that are that are raised and stuff just to produce milk and stuff like that. Why the fuck is it so high? You know, you know what I mean. And and so like when we go to, when we shift gears to tech and stuff like that, it's a little different because like we're still. We're still in we're still in the middle of two shortages. We're still in the middle of a silicon shortage and we're still in the middle of a worker shortage and stuff like that. Also, also like, you know, with um and this is gonna be me like being like a complete computer nerd at this point, right? These chipsets are getting smaller and smaller. The SOCs and all that stuff, like like uh, I don't, I don't quote me on this because I don't know for sure what nanometer the PS5 the PS5's uh, chip is. I want to say it's probably either a seven, eight, or nine nanometer chip. They're making four nanometer chips, and that stuff is getting harder and harder to make cost efficient and stuff like that, you know. But they're doing it because, like, they, because like the technology demands that you know we have to have faster and better technology, but we also have to make it more form fitting. Mm -hmm. It's just like how like we, we go out like everyone gets sticker shock when they like you know like in their head like they want XYZ vehicle and they get sticker shock when they see what the what it is, you know, brand new on the lot and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I it, it, it is what it is. So my only my only thing with the seven hundred dollar price point is if if it's really going to be that much and and i know that we are definitely shifting towards a digital ecosystem everywhere right like i mean i've already made that shift on xbox and playstation right mm -hmm. i mean and i probably will with nintendo if they confirm their console is backwards compatible right like they sh i at that price they should have included a disk drive it's not that much money right i mean i know they're trying to cut costs and everything and sony has started sony has started losing money and right now sony is the only it seems like Sony's the only uh, the only company out there that's 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 trying to push the hardware agenda, and I say that, and I and I and I, and I don't take Nintendo lightly when I say this. Nintendo, at the end of the day, is, is a games company, mm -hmm. whereas Sony is an electronics company. Yeah, I mean, Nintendo's, so Sony, a, Nintendo's a toy company, right? I mean, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nintendo's a toy company and stuff like that. So you know, and 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 you know, here's the thing about it, and I think and I think I didn't quite. I want to say up until last two weeks ago with the reveal of the PS5 Pro, I want to say that's where I didn't really, that's where if the light bulb finally went off for me. Nintendo just wants to entertain. Sony wants to change our lives. Sony wants to change our lives just like Apple wants to change our lives. Microsoft wants to change our lives. You know, LG, Samsung, all these, all the, they want to change our lives. They want to be at the forefront of not just entertainment, but also of technology and stuff like that. You know, NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, all these people, you know, AMD, uh, Intel just admitted they lost a bidding war for like, for like what could have been the, the, the PS6 and the ROG Ally too. <laughs> yeah. You know? You know, there, you know, and there, there it is, you know, like we, we, we get so, we get so like narrowed in on like what we feel things should be that we don't always see the big picture. We don't understand that, you know, like, you know, like a, like, like a manufacturer of like automobiles or, man, or, 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 you know, people that, or, you know, like companies that build buildings and houses and stuff like that. We don't, we don't ever understand the cost of it. We just understand what we feel we should pay for it. Mm-hmm. Mm yeah. I'm passionate about I'm passionate about this stuff. And, and I think the only reason why I'm really passionate about this stuff is because like I'm because like I am a PC guy and I actually run a business. I actually co-own a business, you know, like, you know, on the PC in the PC market space and electronics stuff like that. So I have to like kind of know some some things about how all this stuff goes and how it call how much it costs. Like, trust me, I want to I want to upgrade my computer now. I'm just not ready to spend the money on it right now. Mm hmm. I'm looking more at the general consumer side. I mean, I agree the technology and the system definitely, you know, warrants the price. But for me as a consumer, it's the visuals. Like, 
I don't need, like, I'm glad Sony wants to, like, improve our lives and stuff and give us the very best, but the very best doesn't look that much more different than what we already have. So, okay, see, me, there... it's, it, it's the value's just not there. Like, I can get the same enjoyment out of my $500 system that, you know, I'm supposed to get out of my $700 system. That is true. I agree with that, but I, I need to chime in on that for a second because, like, because, like, we're not going to be able to see like the the change in visuals on a compressed stream that you know was put out on YouTube. We're not. We're going to have to. We're going to have to wait for like the the floor models to show up. You know, at, at our Best Buys, our WalMarts, yeah. our you know stuff like that to be able to. And we got to pray. And we need to pray that they actually give give it to us on like on like HDMI 2.1 or DisplayPort 2.0 with a nice ass television or display hooked up to it and stuff like that. Or we're all going to be like, what's the difference here? We're not going to be able to know for sure until we hook it up to our television you know or hook it up to a computer monitor so, honestly so if you, you're, if you, bring, you're bringing up another point here that you have to have the best of the best to be able to get you, know, you, the, you don't have the best you don't have the best of the best well like, you have to like, have something that can help this you know help the system perform at its at its peak because uh, i take that's that not, system and put it on my old ass hd tv i'm still probably not going to get much of a difference I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that's true like because like because like a five hundred dollar a five hundred dollar like thirty two inch television has enough to like make sure like like all these consoles look great mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, honestly where TVs do not do people justice is unless you have a television that has variable refresh rate VRR like you're never gonna see these games the way you want to see them this is why you get a computer. This is why this is why we get computer monitors to play console games. I know it sounds wild, but that's why people do it. I mean, I'm never going to most- see what, how it's supposed to be, anyways, because I don't know how to work the brightness on my TV. <laughs> I mean, my- <laughs> Everything my- looks too damn dark to me. <laughs> my, I mean, my TV has variable refresh rate on it. I mean, most modern TVs are starting to implement that kind of stuff, but you're gonna you have to pay for it, right? I mean, it's it's not cheap. But very refresh rate doesn't make doesn't make these TVs that much more expensive. What actually makes your TV more expensive is just the refresh rate. On paper, it doesn't. (laughs) Uh, No, my but yeah, mine has mine has uh, my TV is 120 hertz. It plays my games play at 120 hertz at a variable refresh rate, and it's like. And I go to my old TV, which is hanging up over here when I'm like editing or whatever. And it's like, it's like, a, it's like, <laughs> it's like going from. Wait, you edit on your television? No, I edit. At oh, my okay, desk, okay. But my, <laughs> okay, like, okay. While it's okay. Like, while it's, <laughs> like while it's, while it's rendering or, or I'm just listening and I'm playing a game over here because I don't feel like walking back and forth. Yeah, okay. Right? Okay. I got you. Like, I got, because I was about to say, we, we're going to have a conversation as soon as this show's over. It's like. <laughs> The, the the difference that is staggering so yeah um, yeah yeah like honestly any modern tv in the last four or five years is going to be able to like wow the shit out of you when you put a ps5 pro up to it mm-hmm. yeah um it, it may just be that i've never experienced i guess what you guys have experienced so to me you know where I've experienced as I would consider my best experience seeing a PS, you know, getting the PS5 Pro, you know, just wouldn't add much to that experience because I don't know what I'm missing, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Which is, sense. which is fair. The mm-hmm. one other thing I will, the one other thing I will say is that, you know, like, um, you know, like gamers, gamers are in three camps right now. And, and I say three specifically because it's not it's we think it's two camps, but it's actually three because you have you have what's called a really savvy gamer gamer out there, you know, and they're the guys who actually make us PC gamers look 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 like lunatics. Um, they they know like when when the PS5 we can call it the base model now when the PS5 base model came out, they knew a pro was coming. So they didn't buy a PS5. They waited for the pro. They waited for the pro. Uh, they didn't want to spend the money on a PC because they knew they were going to get the games how they want to play them when the PS5 Pro came out. And because it's backwards compatible, because Sony is finally on that damn architecture that's like, oh, we can play games going back to a certain can't can't pay PS3 games, but you know whatever. <laughs> but uh, but still, you know. Um, but because of that, you know, like they are they're in their own different league now. So it's three different camps. You've got you've got. People who are content to just play video games, so they're so they're fine with their Nintendo Switches, their Xbox Series X, XRS, their PlayStation Five based models. 
uh, you've got PC gamers and you know, we've got a whole fucking ton of options now, you know, like we can build a gaming PC or we can go, Oh, where's my ROG LA? Oh, it's somewhere around here. We, we, we got, we got handheld PC steam decks and all this stuff now. And then you've got the enthusiast console gamer. These are the people who buy the pro models of their syst- of these systems. And sometimes they're even like, they're even, they're even crazy because like they'll buy a base model just to trade it in so they can get, so they can get an El, Ch- El Cheapo version of the, of the pro model. Mm-hmm. That's really, that's really what it is now. You know, like, uh, <laughs> was it, was it short and Frodo or what's, what's it called? <laughs> I, Freud. yeah schadenfreude there we go we're getting we're getting to that point now with, with gaming and stuff like that and also and also yes i also do believe that we are look we are honestly starting with the ps4 era like we were starting to get into into the realm of diminishing returns on new consoles and stuff like that you know mm-hmm. we we're, we're 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 there we're there of course the next nintendo system is going to wow us but i really need to see what it looks like because like, there's some part of me that's telling me it's going to look it's going to look slightly better than than what we're getting now mm-hmm. yeah. there's something that's telling so me that the reason why the reason why it's telling me that is because amd is being i'm not amd i'm sorry nvidia is being lazy we could have we could have had an idea of what um we could have had an idea of what switch two games look like if nvidia released a uh a shield tv plus or two or something by this point but nvidia is lazy they want to they want to go on ai which is why mm-hmm. and i love dlss i love it you know on that pssr i'm going to study the show that when the ps5 when, when, when the ps5 pro comes out i'm not buying one but so like when i'm gonna find one of my friends that has a ps5 pro and i'm i'm gonna be posted on their fucking console they're gonna they're gonna hate me they're gonna be like you need to buy my play as ps plus subscription if you're gonna be at this damn much because i'm going to try and dissect the, the software the hardware yeah, because I want to see what this AI upscaling is going to do for this. Because I think AI upscaling, AI upscaling is how we're going to get. You thought you thought the you thought the current console generation was already you know like slow out the gate. AI upscaling is going to really stagnate it because because like the companies are going to start realizing, hey, we have to pump all this money into new technology to, to like give us 8K graphics. You know, there's mm-hmm. <laughs> going to let AI do it. Yeah, well, I mean that's what Nintendo is going to be, right? I mean that's uh. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's because they're falling back on NVIDIA's DLSS. Yeah. So. Well, to answer Shane's question, I think it's going to be around $400 because Mm -hmm. Nintendo, you know, as much as the technology is going to improve, I think the big thing is Nintendo is probably still going to have a storage based uh, game where you can put your uh, saves and stuff on the games itself so that the system doesn't have to have that big of a, you know, memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Laron. I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention some of the reasons why there's also a price hike on the PS5 Pro is because it has a true two terabyte mm-hmm. SSD in it, mm-hmm. yeah. a true one. I mean, so yeah, like maybe like twenty percent of that SSD will be devoted to the operate uh, to the actual operating system. So you'll actually have like the you actually have like the storage. And once you start adding terabytes onto your storage, price also goes up. This is why I don't have an eight terabyte SSD in my damn ROG Ally. Because <laughs> I do not want to spend seven hundred dollars for the storage. Yeah, not when I can just not. When, oh, I bought this this nifty little thing right here. This is a little thing I can like like attach to my ROG Ally, and I can actually add US uh, USB uh, uh, USB flash drives or an, an SD card to it, mm-hmm. and expand my memory. Yeah. And, it's, and it's barely a hardware mod. Yeah. Um, I think I think the next Nintendo console is going to be three ninety nine. I think that's the safest bet, especially because like if Sony and Microsoft are also planning handhelds with their next round of whatever, right? Like those are going to probably be a pretty penny at least, right? They're going to be very gonna, pricey. And then they're gonna, you, they're you, pricey. Yeah, and then you look at the price of like the ROG Ally and the ROG Ally X and the and the Steam Deck, like. Uh, you know, they, they, they're they definitely going to be cheaper than those, but that's because the tech in them is going to be older than that, right? And because it's Nintendo, and that's how they always work. But well, the problem is you're also going to be locked in one ecosystem. See, the, see, yeah. people can bitch and complain all day about, like, the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally and, you know, being, like, one's Linux-based and one's Windows-based, whatnot, but you still have versatility in all those. Like, you know, like, like whatever, whatever the hell Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony pushed out as far as their handhelds is going to be in one ecosystem. 
Yeah. And you're going to have and you're going to have to jailbreak it to try and get expansions. And we've seen we've seen how horribly well like a jailbreaking a Nintendo Switch goes for people who want to do something a little bit more than just play Nintendo games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm. Y'all yeah, shouldn't lob this to me. Y'all yeah, should not have. Stephanie, you got any final uh, opinion on price or anything? Nothing to add that hasn't already been said. I'm, I'm my vote is 400 at most 450, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I was thinking 449. I was thinking 449. The reason why I'm thinking 449 is because Nintendo, Nintendo knows, Nintendo knows. How many people do we know that has more than two Nintendo Switches in their in their in their possession? Well, well the the thing the thing with the four, I think that they might come out with two SKUs, one 399 and one 449 with different memory options. Because they did that, they've done that before. Mm-hmm. So, um, all right, our last. Question. I don't. I don't think Nintendo's making a five hundred dollars system. Not yet. No, 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 no. I don't. Not think yet. They're not. They're not yet. They'll. 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 They'll get too big for their britches one day and do it. But not. But not right now. No, yeah. they'll do it when everyone else is given the nine hundred dollars uh, handheld system. Oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> uh, our 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 last question comes from uh, Deshaun Malone. He writes in. He says, "Hello." All you beautiful people, uh, now that you're back from PAX, what do you, you want to do better next time around? Or uh, did you do what you needed? I know I know what I know what everybody wants to do next time around. They want to make sure LeBron takes his ass to a fucking convention. Yes, that is priority number one. Yeah. And for me, priority number two, um, I'm a little getting a little bit better at it, but I need to do a better job networking. Um, I, I've achieved all the appointments I wanted to achieve. I played all the demos I wanted to demo. I bought way more than I needed to buy. Uh, <laughs> so I'm hitting what I want to hit, but networking is a, is a, is a weakness of mine. The next one will be East. So I'll be in my home turf. So I'll be a bit more comfortable to attend like these after parties, which are yeah, that's really big, big opportunities to network. But I just like couldn't do it. <laughs> I just yeah. couldn't not have it in me. So, yeah, that's the uh, and do a panel mm-hmm. and yeah. do a panel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, I heard you kicked ass at the trivia panel. I don't know who told you that, but thanks. That's what I heard. I, I haven't seen the evidence, but I just heard, you know, uh, hey, hey, people. <laughs> you can give me a participation trophy. <laughs> but um, thank you. The, yeah. First of all, we're taking a damn video person the next time. Uh, Andre, I don't care if we have to like drag you over the border, but you, you're you doing <laughs> our video stuff for us. Uh, but the, the thing I want to do, though, is like go to some of the parties after the event, after the event, right? Like uh, just we just, I think this time we were just kind of all tired and I was fucking exhaunt uh, I, the uh, problem with Wes is that that's a three hour time difference in the wrong direction for you guys and so that when you had those after parties it's practically midnight for you guys yeah yeah honestly honestly i don't have a problem i don't have when i was in, when i was in the west coast last last summer like i didn't have a problem acclimating to like the time over there like uh, like I had I had jet lag coming back. Yeah, I was coming home. That was the problem for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, me. Yeah, because I mean, like, I mean, like, shit. I I can I can take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> on, on Pacific time, I can take a nap. I I do want to say the next time we go, though, to an event, uh, I'm not putting so much work into stuff going. Be like to put out beforehand. Yes, um, thank you. I will hold you to it. I think I took a screenshot. I, I might have warned that. you about you. that like ahead of time too. I I know everybody warned me, but I'm stubborn. I'm a stubborn. It's like let, stubborn let's do ass. Jacobs. Let's do Jacobs thing at PAX. No, we need to do it before. I, I feel like, like yeah. I feel like we own. I feel like we owe some type of apology to like our fans and our guests. You know, for that because like. Cause like we were, we were being overzealous. We were, we were, you know, and so like that we made the fucking thing work, but shit, if we didn't burn ourselves the fuck out and throw a lot of our schedule stuff into turmoil. Yeah. And like, Mm -hmm. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure it affected everybody. But like that for like that first day when we got there, I just like, I was struggling to keep up with everybody. Like I just was, I mean, on top of like only sleeping like 12 hours in four days. Like I just, I couldn't, I, 
I don't know how I survived that first day. Uh, like it was fine, you, though. You, you had the bad uh, first part what, of the day. I had the bad second half of the day. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's another thing too. Like maybe maybe like maybe like part of the PAX planning is uh the the next PAX convention planning is like we uh, we work out shifts of who's like gonna do what and be responsible for what you know, or at least try to make sure the ship stays the ship stays upright. Yeah. Yep. Um, no, we we did too much the day before PAX that just yeah, it fried us. Like coming I in, like, I was like, I know, I know, y'all like, slept in a plane. Like, 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 I did not. Steph, you were, no, Steph, you were, was, were you were, were you a direct flight, Steph? Okay, so you had like you had like a good six hours of sleep. I, I'm, uh-huh. I'm thinking I can't sleep on a plane. You sleep on planes? Oh, I, oh, cannot. oh, I go. I didn't. I go night night. As soon as the plane leaves the ground, I sleep. I was planning Lucky. on sleeping all the way there, except um, <laughs> there was no air on my plane, and it smelled like uh it it smelled like a fucking waste management plant and that's good wait wait did you book a flight on chartways or something what the hell <laughs> no it was a Ala- it was alaska and uh we, we the, and then alaskan. the two people next to me also smelled and they were loud as fuck so uh, i did not sleep I bet next time. I bet next time you go on a plane, you're gonna take you're gonna take an eye mask with you and and, and a thing of Vicks vapor rub to put right on your top lip. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what they. That's what forensics people do. So they don't smell the dead bodies. Also, I paid I paid extra for an aisle seat and I got stuck by the window. <laughs> so I would have raised hell uh, off of that alone. We already have, and um, I don't know what's gonna happen yet, but. Twenty dollars off your next flight. Jeez. Anyways, a free bag of uh, peanuts. I don't like peanuts, so that doesn't do anything for me. Well, uh, too bad you're gonna accept the peanuts. Uh, speaking of accepting, we're gonna accept that this episode is over. Uh, I want to thank yeah! everybody out there Never! for watching and or listening to this episode of the Boss Rush Podcast. Uh, Laron, Pat, Stephanie, thank you for your time as always. It's great that the four of us are together again. Uh, it feels like it's been a long time since it was just mm-hmm. us, but uh, we made it. We did it. And uh, I appreciate you all. And I miss you all. So. Miss you everyone, make, everyone, make sure to check the show notes. You'll find out how to catch catch hold of each and every one of us here. You'll also know about our Patreon, patreon.com slash Boss wow. Network. Huh? I was getting there. Oh, oh what the heck? Oh, I'm Man, sorry. last week Pat hijacks the show. This week you're hijacking it. What's going on? I'm going to be out of a job. <laughs> be out of a job. Taking away yeah. that responsibility of yours, Corey. I know. I know, right? You should be happy. Mm-hmm. Next yours. week, Steph's going to hijack it. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. that's right. Anyway, take control. As <laughs> Laron said. You can support us over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can check out BossRush.net for all of our content. If you listen on podcast services, leave us some five stars and a nice rating or review. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. And until next time, we love you. Goodbye. If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network.